Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Again, uh, thank you for uh, joining uh, today's session and welcome to the Connected Insights Web Summit. Uh, super excited to have you in here today. Uh, there's going to be a lot of value packed into today's session, so I'm really excited that uh, all of you have joined today. Uh, to give you a little bit of introduction to myself, uh, I'm Priyasha Kauri, and I'm a co-founder and partner at Connected Law. At Connected Law, we, we're a new age law firm and we help connect clients with senior lawyers and boutique firms. Uh, so if you're a boutique firm, then please uh, feel free to get in touch with me to know how we could work together. Uh, so today our speaker is an expert on knowing how to charge your worth and with their own unique story. Uh, so today uh, we're going to learn a lot. She's going to share her magic formula on how to build a foundation from where we can start charging confidently uh, and getting paid our worth. I'm really excited for this one because I feel like sometimes I'm too nice and then uh, you know, clients can clients can take advantage of that as well sometimes. So I think I'm going to get a lot of insights in today's session, and I hope you do too. So please welcome author of Amazon bestseller, True Worth, uh, Vanessa Yugati. <laughs> okay, I'm going to dive right in. I'm going to dive right in, Priyasha. Can we also get people to understand the... Uh, raise the hand uh, icon at the bottom of the sure. screen. I'm, sure. going to ask, I'm going to ask you a question. Obviously, normally this is the kind of talk I deliver in front of a live audience face to face. At the bottom of your screen, you should see an icon called raise your hand. And my first one, my opening is actually asking a question and asking you to raise your hand. And that's the best way I can do it. So here we go. Raise your hand if you'd like to make more money. And raise your hand again if you'd like to make more money without having to get more clients, do more work, or compromise your value or your values. So perhaps you're undercharging. Maybe you're discounting your fees, or possibly you're doing work for free. Or you might even be doing all three, which means that you're losing money hand over fist. And of course, the more often you do it, the more money you're losing. And you're probably spending way too much time working to make up for the shortfall. So you're overworked, stressed, tired, and even resentful. But imagine being able to charge the right fee for your work. And imagine charging for all the work you do. And imagine never having to discount because of that little voice in your head. You'll be making more money. It could be 100,000, 150,000 or 200,000 dirham a year or more. Now, you have to work out what it is in your own currency because I was expecting an audience from UAE. So I put it in dirham. So and you'll also have more quality time to spend with your family, with your friends and doing the things you love to do. So I think you'll agree if you want to get from that place of not charging properly to the place of charging properly, you'll need a strategy. And what I'm talking about is self-worth. Now, self-worth is at the heart of everything you do and drives your behavior. So as a human being, you're motivated by pleasure or by pain. So you're either moving towards pleasure or moving away from pain. So to put this into a business context, unless you feel 100% worthy, how can you possibly charge what you're worth? The answer is you can't. So if someone tells you to raise your fees, it makes you feel uncomfortable. And when you feel uncomfortable, what do you do? You stick with the fees that you currently charge, even if it means not being paid for the work you're worth. So why would you need to solve this problem now? Well, it's not really difficult to answer that. There's two reasons. Number one, and this I can guarantee, this problem will not solve itself. And secondly, the impact of not solving this problem can be catastrophic to your business, to the firm you work for, and to your own private and family life. Every day that passes by, you're losing more money and more of your precious time that you can never, ever get back. So if you have the challenges of discounting, over-servicing, underestimating, undercharging going on, make a decision right now. To, that you will take action to solve this problem. Because once you do, you'll be on the path to a happier, 
healthier and wealthier life. Now, I remember a few years ago, I worked with a client. He was actually, um, he was an architect. And by his own admission, he was losing uh, 100,000 dirham, 20,000 uh, pounds a year, he reckoned, by not charging properly. So I asked him how old he was, and he said, 40. So I said, that means in 10 years time, when you're 50, just 50, you will have lost the equivalent of a million dirham. Um, 200,000 pounds, whatever that is in US dollars or anywhere else, a lot of money. And that is right on the bottom line. So if you've got these behaviors going on, you might want to think to yourself, so how much money am I losing? What am I losing? And what impact is that having on me? And if you happen to have a firm with a number of people who are billing, say you had 10, if you were a law firm, say you had 10 lawyers all losing, a um, hundred thousand dirham or twenty thousand pounds that would be a million dirham lost off the bottom line in a year so you can see that the amount adds up very 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 quickly so have you ever been in a situation where you experienced in a conflict and i think you'll agree it's not a nice place to be and if you'd have been with me in december 2012 just a few days before christmas 21st to be precise, the shortest day of the year, at least here in the UK. And I was alone in my office at home, the light at blind shutting out a cold, dark evening. And I was contemplating the fact that for the first time since my father had died in October 2008, I was going to be spending Christmas on my own. And if the sound was there, I'd have you all do an ooh ah there. Uh, and so, as you can imagine, I was feeling a little bit sad and sorry for myself. But at the same time, I was looking and wondering what was going to happen in the new year. Now, I was already coaching small businesses and professional services people to help them overcome the mental barriers that stop them moving forward uh, in their lives. But there was something else in the back of my mind, and I just didn't know what it was that was saying, you know, this, you need to be looking at this. So I was on the computer looking for inspiration. I mean, not literally on it, but in front of the computer looking for inspiration. And I found it by some amazing quirk of fate. I stumbled across a marketing program specifically for coaches. Rob Quester, Rob Quester, I know that name. Guy in his early 40s, dark wavy hair, a little bit reminiscent of the Laughing Cavalier. And his words literally jumped out of the computer at me. You've got to have a niche and build a tribe. A niche, a niche, my kingdom for a niche. Now I'd heard about niching, but I just didn't know what mine was. So then all this almighty conflict and thoughts were pouring around my head. I was scared, I didn't know what to do. Could I do this, can't I do it? And on and on that battle raged well into the new year. And in fact, it wasn't until March, 2013, three months later, that I made a decision to sign up for the program. And on that first uh, workshop that we went to, they reminded us that we needed to have a niche. They asked some questions and I wrote down some answers. And as if by magic, some answers appeared on the paper and one of them was the subject of value or worth. And at the time I had no idea how that got there. But the people running the program said that is marketable. So I said, okay, you're the experts, I'm going to take a leap of faith, and off I went networking. And when we're networking in the UK, I mean live networking um, with real people in a real room, not virtually, there are always lots of professional services people there. There could be lawyers, accountants, architects, consultants, all sorts of people. And so I asked them questions. I asked them whether they were challenged with charging. And I found out really, really quickly that this whole thing of undercharging, underestimating, discounting and over-servicing were really, really commonplace. So it should make you feel better to know this. And I'm talking about people who were experienced, had been practicing for a long time, been in business for a long time. Still, they found it really, really difficult. And that's because it's actually a human problem. It's not, it's not just because you're one kind of professional or that, it's a human problem. And many of us struggle with this. So um, I thought, well, that's a good bit of information. 
And then I looked at clients I'd been working with and I discovered some of them because I'd already been helping people with mindset and confidence. I'd already been helping them with charging, but I hadn't actually realized that that's what I was doing. And then the third thing that happened was I decided to shine the spotlight on myself. Oh my goodness. <laughs> If only you could see how awful I was. I was absolutely hopeless with charging, embarrassed talking about money, clueless, hopeless in a sales meeting. And at that moment, it was like a big light bulb moment. I realized exactly why there'd been a niggle in the back of my mind and why this subject had come forward. And that was because I needed to solve the problem for myself. Absolutely. And then the final thing that happened before I got going was I was in bed uh, one night and you know that part where you get quite drowsy, you're half awake and half asleep. Everybody has had this experience of feeling that way. Well, when you're in that space, your conscious mind is finished, it's gone to sleep. But your unconscious mind is wide awake still and it's still active. And a formula appeared in my mind. And as soon as I saw it, I knew it was correct. And I realized I haven't actually shared my screen, but there's nothing, you've not missed anything uh, at all. But uh, I, apologies for this. Just suddenly realized I hadn't shared it. And now it doesn't seem to want to come up. <clears throat> right. Don't know how that happened. doesn't seem to want me to be able to do it, um, Priyasha. Yeah, you can, you mean share your screen or? Share, it didn't seem, it's, it's yeah, just, uh, it's I can just see. not showing up. You mean the presentation? Yeah, and yet we did it before and it just is not, there oh, it okay. is, we find it. I really apologize for that, everybody. I was just going great guns and then completely forgot to do this. So, um, Anyway, I told you about the formula and now I'm going to share what I now call my magic formula with you. So here it is, UV plus CV plus CD equals CW. And for the purposes of today's talk, I'm just gonna be focusing on the UV part of the equation. So with this, you'll know what to charge, you'll know you're worth it and you'll feel good about it. And without it, you'll continue to undercharge, discount and over-service your clients. And you're probably thinking, what does this mean, Vanessa? Well, it means understand your value. And would you agree if you understand your value, you appreciate your worth? And when you don't understand your value, you're in a really poor position when it comes to charging. So it's, you might want to write the following down. Your clients will only really value you when you value yourself your clients will only really value you when you value yourself. And I'm gonna tell a quick story because stories are always a really good way of uh, helping you remember the important things. I worked with a lady, she was a consultant uh, a few years ago actually now, and she had all the bad behaviors going on. She was brilliant at her work, but really bad at the business side. So she was underestimating, undercharging, over-servicing, under-billing, you name it, working way too hard, six and a half days a week, stressed as, uh, as anything. And um, sometimes working with clients who weren't really her, the sort of clients she wanted to work with. So she wanted to get her whole life into balance, work a lot less, about four days a week, but still maintain the, um, the level of income or increase it. And that's what we did. But one of the fascinating things that happened while we were working together, as she was taking charge of her business, taking much more control of uh, her whole business and her clients, was that she started getting emails from clients saying how much they valued her. Now, some of these clients she'd had for years and years and years, and they'd never really said that before. And it was because as she began to value herself, the universe reflects back to us what we think and feel about ourselves. So it was quite amazing to watch this. So would I be right in thinking that probably you don't value yourself as much as you could? So I want you to think about um, the analogy of driving a car, and I'm going to make the assumption that everybody does drive a car. But if you don't drive a car, then think about walking, riding a bike or something of that nature. 
So if you've been driving for a few years, everybody will have had the experience I'm going to describe. So when you started to learn to drive, it was actually quite challenging for the conscious mind because there were a lot of things you had to do at the same time. So you had to coordinate your hands and feet. You had to judge distance and width and speed. And you had to work out what the other cars on the road were doing. And you also had to work out what the, uh, what, what the signs that you were seeing and the traffic lights and all this kind of thing were doing. So that's a lot for the conscious mind to do. But of course, as you keep practicing driving, it becomes easier and easier and easier because you're doing the same things over and over again. And then one day you will have gone on a familiar journey, got to your destination, and then realized you had no recollection of the journey whatsoever. And if you can put the ha raise your hand sign if you've had that experience, but this is a universal experience. It doesn't matter where you are in the world. If you've been driving any length of time, you'll have had this experience. And at that point, what it means is that your subconscious mind was driving for you, not your conscious mind. And there's a term for this, it's called um, unconscious competence. You become unconsciously competent in driving when that happens. And your unconscious mind or your subconscious mind does loads of things for you every day. In fact, you couldn't live without it, apart from all your bodily functions, many things that you do without consciously thinking about it. And that's fantastic. But there is a bit of a downside. And the downside is that once you become unconsciously com competent, you take it for granted because to you it's easy. I very much doubt anybody goes on a journey, gets out of the car, then says, oh, my God, didn't I drive fantastically? Wasn't I brilliant? <laughs> you just get out of your car and go and do the next thing that you have to do. So then you probably can see where I'm going with this. So if we then look at um, if we then look at uh, understanding your own value and we'll uh, draw an analogy between that. So under that, uh, understanding your value, there's three key aspects. There's your expertise, there's the client's needs or perception, and there's your general self-worth. And your expertise also consists of three things, which are your qualifications, whatever they are, your continual professional development, and very importantly, the experience you have putting all of this into practice. And of course, the longer you've been doing something, the easier it becomes for you. And so you then take it for granted. And as soon as you take something for granted, you actually devalue it, which is why it starts becoming easier for you to discount and over-service your clients. So I'm gonna tell you another story, but a quick swig of water first. So this is a story about an engineer, and this engineer was called up by a manufacturing company where one of their machines had broken down. And this engineer was quite switched on business-wise, so he asked, so what's it costing you for the machine to be broken down? And the organisation said, how much was it? Because it's in dirham, 100,000 dirham a day, which of course is quite a lot of money. So armed with that information, he went in to take a look at the machine. And as he was walking around the machine, he was listening to it, prodding it, poking it. And after just a few minutes, he hit the machine hard with a hammer, bang. And hey presto, the machine burst into life. Now he listened to the machine for the next few minutes just to make sure all was well and the machine was running sweet. And as soon as he was happy, he packed up his things and he went on his merry way. And he sent an invoice into the organization for 10,000 uh, 10, dirham. And they came back and they said to him, could we have a breakdown please? And he said, for hitting the machine with a hammer, 250 dirham. For knowing where to hit the machine with a hammer, 9,750 dirham, total 10,000 dirham. So let me ask you a question. If you had a similar situation in your business where you could solve a problem quickly, but save people a lot of money, would you have charged the equivalent of 10,000 dirham? Or would you have charged 250 dirham and said 250 dirham for a few minutes work, that's, that's absolutely fine. Or worse still, would you have said, well, it only took me a few minutes, I can't possibly charge for that and done it for nothing. But to really appreciate the value of the work you do, you need to also understand it from the client's perspective. 
So to do this, ask the client quality open questions. That is questions such as what, where, when, who, how, and why. And when you ask, ask these questions, allow the client to answer without prompting, interrupting, or leading, because in this way, you'll get all the information you really need. So the purpose of doing this is to establish what is the client's pain? I mean, emotional pain, of course, not physical. And how extreme is that pain? Because the more extreme the pain, the more they're likely to use your services. So people employ lawyers or other professionals because they have a problem need, they need solving. And it's your job to find out what solving that problem will be worth to the client and what it will cost them if they don't solve it. OK, so in my experience, certainly in the UK, many lawyers, for example, don't really have those kinds of conversations. They don't really have the business conversations with the clients. They'll talk about their hourly rate. They'll talk about fixed fees. They'll talk about the technical side or the legal side. But price has got nothing to do with value. Price means nothing. So you've always got to focus people on value. And the more you can understand the client's emotional pain, the more you can understand their pain, the more they're likely to want to work with you because they will feel understood. So, you know, it's not just about the solution you get in terms of the technical problem you're solving. It's about the experience the client has working with you, how they feel valued as well, how they feel understood. So one of my clients um, was charging uh, his clients about 1500 dirham an hour. But before I worked with him, he was doing a lot of work for free, a lot of work without charging at all. So every time he did work for nothing, it was costing, costing the business and costing him as well. So even though he knew he should have been charging, he couldn't do it because there was a bit of anxiety or fear going on. So here's the scenario. He had clients who were paying him fixed fees for a certain type of piece of work to be done. But then they would ring up and they'd say, oh, could you just do this or could you just do that? And he'd say yes before he had a chance to think and then therefore do it for nothing. So that was costing him a lot of money. And when I started work with him, we then came up with a strategy for him to be able to convert that work into paying work. And he said it was really scary having to do it. It was obvious that he needed to be doing it, but it was scary. I needed to build his confidence to be able to do it. But within a few weeks of, his, of teaching him the strategy and helping him with that, he brought in additional uh, sales of 45,000 dirham approximately, about 9,000 pounds. And then for an entire year, it was about, oh gosh, where have the figures gone? 45,000, that was that, about 230,000 dirham, about 45,000 pounds for the whole year. And the really, really important thing to remember is here, he did not turn into some nasty money grabbing person. It was just work he was doing that he was billing properly. And he also didn't lose clients either. Because of course, because as he was valuing himself, as I said before, clients needed the work doing, they recognized it was important and therefore they were happy to pay for it. So, in order to understand your value, you need to deeply reflect on your expertise. Now, this is absolutely vital. And obviously this is a very short talk, but the point is you have to go away and start working on understanding your own value. And I'm going to give you a little exercise that you can do with, with, as a homework to take away with you. But reflecting on your expertise in order to understand your value is not something you do in five minutes. And it's not something you just do once. It's something that needs time for you to get to grips with it. And then you need to do it again, because the longer you're doing your expertise, you're working, the more expertise, the more your expertise grows. And it's easy for you to forget that. You need to spend more time having conversations with clients that are around understanding the value from their perspective and what it means to them. And that would be um, something that I talk about more in a, in a longer session that I was doing. And I believe the entire world needs to increase their self-worth, apart from the odd few people who are incredibly arrogant. Most of us will come somewhere along this continuum of not being totally comfortable with charging. I was at the extreme um, 
end of being absolutely hopeless. Some people are at the other end where they have no problem and probably charge too much. Everybody else is somewhere in between the rest of it. So, okay, so this is the activity. This is being recorded, so you will get a recording. So don't feel worried about, I can't scribble it all down. Um, so you'll be able to see the, uh, the, the PowerPoint slide and also hear me talk this through. So if you want to do this exercise, if it's just you in business, just find a buddy to do it with. Or if you're in a firm and you've got several people, you can just do it with a group of people. So you need to get the people into pairs. One person is going to ask this question and the other person is then answering and then you swap over. And when you do this exercise, in order for you to allow yourself or your subconscious mind to just come up with the answers, I suggest you record the activity, then you don't have to spend time writing things down or remembering later on what you've done. So the one person who's asking the question, as you can see on here, says, what's the value you bring to your clients? Now, remember, your value is stored, your expertise is stored in the unconscious mind. So what you're trying to do is bring it out into your conscious mind. So that person answers. You can then say to them, great, fantastic, or something like that, just to encourage them um, to answer more. And if they get stuck, say to them, what else? Because again, that's teasing that information out um, of the subconscious mind. And when I run longer events, you know, paid events and so on, this is one of the exercises I do. And people always come up with a whole load of stuff. And if I'm doing it live, then we've got a whiteboard and we're putting them all down there. And it changes the way, it starts to change the way you feel about your own value. You start connecting with it more emotionally. Make sure you get everything out of that person. And when there's absolutely nothing left for them to say, you can swap it as well, swap over and start all over again with the other person. So it doesn't have to take a long time. You can do it in five, 10, 10 minutes, maybe at the most. It's job done. But then it's something that you can build on from there. So that's it, really. Um, I'm going to, we're going to have some questions, but if you want to get a copy of my little Amazon bestseller, you could grab a PDF from this link and just download it for yourself and read it. It's a really simple read. Whether you're a lawyer or not, it will apply. If you're in any kind of service-based business where you're charging time for money, my little book should help you get started. It will also explain the rest of that formula to you as well. Um, and if you want to speak to me, there's a number there, but better still, there's an email address and we can always set up a little Zoom if that's something you would like to do. So um, questions, do we have any questions yet in the chat yes. box? Yeah, we do have a few questions. Uh, let me you know, scroll through them. We have a question from uh, BJ and his question is, what if the client asks for a guaranteed solution in order to pay you based on this explanation about our value? What is it you do, BJ? Uh, can you unmute yourself? Yeah, please unmute yourself. And... BJ? Sorry, just give me one second. To... Sure, sure. Mm -hmm. Of course, we don't actually see the attendees, do we? Oh, maybe there's a few more coming now. Maybe they are. Can can BJ tell us what it is you do? Mm. Apparently not. Oh, he's an executive coach. Oh well, okay. If you're a coach, you know what um, what you can do. What you can say to them is something like. I can guarantee that I will do everything to help you achieve what you need to do. Can you, yeah, I think we just have to mute. Is that's not me, can you mute? Yeah, that's not me. So. <laughs> no, no. That's... There's some background noise from someone else. From you, you Zair Mohammed, can you switch off your sound, please? Because we're getting background noise. I think he has now. Good. So, um, sorry, BJ. I think what you can say is that, look, I will show up and I will give you everything I've got to help you achieve whatever it is that you want them to achieve or they want to achieve. But you have to say to them, there are no 
There is no such thing as 100% guarantee because you have to do your part and I can't guarantee what you'll do. I can guarantee what I'll do. I can't guarantee what you'll do. Does that help you, BJ? Uh, yes, Vanessa, thanks. Um, I, I am completely in agreement with that. Uh, <laughs> I, I wanted to get your thoughts on this. Uh, I know because we field this question whenever we change the pricing from an hourly model to, uh, to based on the problem. Uh, so I was curious to listen. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, no, perfect. Thank you. We have another question from Sunil. So his question is, how do you compare losing a project with a competitor because we quoted a higher price as against winning it, quoting a lower price? Yeah, it's a bit of a wow. challenging one. I mean, it, it depends. You know, are you talking about a tender here or are you just talking in general? Um, uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can, Sunil. Yeah, uh, I'm talking in general, like uh, I run a software development company. So often it happens that we, we have a project and then, uh, you know, well, we quote a price based on some estimates. Uh, and then, uh, you know, there's a negotiation uh, that goes on. So I'm wondering if we quote a higher price. So we have lost a couple of clients because of that. And quoting a lower price does gives us the the project. But uh, of course, it's not the worth that we see ourselves. Like, yes, we should actually have uh, gotten more price. So that's why I'm wondering, how do you actually kind of deal in such situations? Well, well, I mean, there, there's several things. First of all, there are always clients who don't want to pay very much for your services, no matter what your service is. And you have to make a decision. Do I actually want clients who don't pay me very much? Um, in my book, the answer is no, I'm not interested in those sorts of clients. They exist everywhere in the world, it doesn't matter where you are. Then there, then there can be people who, um, everybody's price focused to some extent, but some people are more on value focused. So if you're losing to somebody else, are you losing based on the same work that they're going to do? Or is it that you haven't actually communicated the real value that you have over uh, somebody else? Yeah. Um, Hmm. So probably the client actually doesn't know uh, what goes in. They are not kind of, as I said, that is a software development. So they don't know what goes in. They don't understand the expertise. For them, it's like, you know, buying oranges. Like you can buy from one seller and you, you can buy the same one from the other yeah. seller. Yeah. So that's where the challenge actually kind of uh, comes, where uh, how do we project ourselves as kind of expertise? And, and of course, after doing the project, they understand they value, they, the value starts after the project but not before the project, that's where the challenge is. Yeah, but we have to we have to make sure that people understand what they're going to get for the, you know, what, what the result will be, what they're going to get for the work you do and how you do it. But it's not just about, as I said earlier on, it's not just about the solution that you're getting and the solution being a good solution because people could give you a solution that doesn't actually work. Um, but it's also about the experience they have, how they feel around you, how much trust you've built up with them. Or if they're just if it's just all about talking about price, which is why I talk about value, it's about moving people away from talking about price to talking about the value of working with you and what you get them. I was running a, an event for um, a law firm not very long ago, and one of the ladies in the room said, "Oh, she had somebody, and she's, this is all was happening where somebody had got a quote from her, <coughs> and then gone down the road to another law firm and got a quote that was lower." And then they'd come back to her and said, oh, I've got this quote that's lower from this firm. Can you meet the quote? And I said to her, the answer is no. I said, they want, they want to work with you because they like you. So you have to stick to your guns. So if you have people say comparing with somewhere else, you can, you can be really cheeky sort of and say, look, I don't know about them. What I can tell you is what we do and the results we get. And here are some of our client testimonials. And um, we'll make sure the experience you have is absolutely fantastic. I don't know whether you'll get the same service elsewhere. And this is what we charge. Because otherwise, it's always going to be the slippery slope of driving the prices down, 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 down. That's the best I can do for an answer, Sunil. Yeah, no, that's uh, that's helpful. I completely kind of agree. And that's a very good advice. Uh, yeah, all right. Vanessa, can I interrupt you? This is, I think, BJ. Uh, yeah, Vanessa, uh, can, oh, yes, I add, can I add something based on my 29 years of yeah. uh, business uh, 
business development in IT especially. So I couldn't ignore the question because I spent a lot many years in software development, uh, business development. Uh, same thing as what Sunil is saying. And now I'm a coach. Uh, the one thing that I have learned over so many years of uh, software uh, consulting projects uh, is if you have not done the differentiation early and you have not differentiated yourself then you have to lowball the price to get the client. Mm. Uh, so exactly. it's all about, yeah. So if you have not differentiated, then you have to lowball to get the business uh, because then you've not done your job well before uh, in terms of marketing, uh, all the marketing material. That, that's all I wanted to share. Thank yeah. you. Go yeah, absolutely ahead. correct. Totally agree. Thanks, Vijay. We have another question uh, from Ravi and that's uh, value billing is understood by clients when the economy and the business is growing. However, it's not easy sell at times of economic challenges such as what we're facing now. Any thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> I can't see Ravi, but um, you must be there somewhere. So uh, yeah, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, it's easy to lower your prices. And when we first went into this whole COVID lockdown thing last year, uh, I saw on LinkedIn people throwing stuff out free left, right and center. And, um, you know, I was a bit disheartened at first when I saw that. And then I started posting and writing and videoing about it because the, the thing is, there's only one way. If you go keep going down, there is only one way. It's right to the bottom. And if you do that, not only do you suffer in terms of your business financially, you suffer emotionally as well, because you're just working really hard for not very much. And that creates so much, you know, stress, tiredness, resentment, all sorts of negative energies. So you have to decide again, who's your market? Who are the people you're selling to? If you're selling, if you want to be the cheapest and sell cheap, then go for cheap clients. But if you don't, then find clients where there are always people who've got money to spend. It may be harder to find, but there are always people with money to spend, no matter what's going on out in the economy. I mean, you look, some businesses are doing fantastically well out of COVID. Just think about the PPE industry or Amazon or people like that. They're doing fantastically. And I'm sure loads of others are as well. So I have to always maintain, I am never going to change my stance of charging what you're worth because otherwise it's, it would be then charge what you're worth only in the good times. No, mm -hmm. you have to charge what you're worth and you have to be willing, you have to, will, you have to be willing to let go of stuff if it's just cheap, cheap stuff or decide that you're gonna take it and just go down and down and down. Yeah. We have another, thanks, thanks Vanessa. Uh, there's another question from Safa. Uh, her question is, uh, I have the courage to talk to clients and I show them the value I bring to them, but I always can't get through just saying the number, the price, how to, how to get over it. I think it's mm -hmm. a question of discussing, you know, price and costs. Uh, how do you get over that? Uh, the feeling of the discomfort, I would say. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's, it, is, it takes some work. I mean, you have to do some work on yourself because it's really about your own beliefs around money and the fear of rejection and, and a million and one other things. And, um, you know, that's part of the process that I go through with clients is to help them with that because I was so awful at it myself. Because it, it's going to let you down. If you don't feel confident talking about your fees or your, your prices, what it means is that you don't actually believe you're worth it. And then the client will pick up that you don't believe you're worth it. And then they'll push back on the price. So you have to know in yourself, in your heart of hearts, that you're actually worth it in order to be able to say it with confidence. But you also have to, you know, you've got to go through this process of understanding your value and being really sure of the value you're providing for your clients and be able to help them with that and understand that. And then you have to learn to talk to yourself in a way that really is about self-belief and confidence in yourself. And that the fact that you're willing for somebody to say no, just because they say no, doesn't mean to say that they'll say no forever. And it doesn't mean to say you should say, oh, well, I'll discount for you then. Because that's, that's, not how to, that's not how to do business. So I'm sorry to say, was it Ravi? 
or did I got the wrong name now? No, it was Safa, I believe. Sorry, so sorry. Um, that um, you have to work on yourself. This is all about self-worth, you know, which is what I was saying at the beginning of the talk. Self-worth is a massive part of this. And if we don't feel confident in ourselves, then we can't charge properly. That's the short answer, really. There's nothing more I can do than, than say that. Get working on this monkey mind, as I call it. <laughs> Get my little book, get my little book as well. You can get the download. Um. Okay, I think there's one more question. Uh, uh, it's a question by Rishak. Uh, wanted your thoughts on this. Is it, is, is it the case where work experience and skills being potentially rated higher than educational qualifications? Has the shift become more mainstream? MBAs and, and degrees are overlooked for people who develop prototypes, digital portfolios. Two so more questions, sorry. <laughs> yeah. No, I guess I guess the question is, has it be, is experience more important than your degrees and qualification? Mm, gosh, I don't want to upset anybody, but ultimately I think so because you know you know you there, there are certain jobs where you have to go through a lot of qualifications in order to be able to practice you know legal being one of them um but ultimately is the results you're getting for clients that counts isn't it providing you're doing everything in the in an ethical manner are you getting results or aren't you okay i can tell you a story now it's clicked in from god knows where so when i was at school which is an awful long time ago we had one of our math, and it was a very, very good school, by the way. We had a math teacher who had amazing qualifications, but he was the worst teacher on the planet. He couldn't control the class. We were very bad in his class. We were very well behaved in other classes, but in his class, we were badly behaved. Why? Because he, he had no personality. He couldn't control us, and we talked all the way through it. He couldn't teach, but he had qualifications to be a teacher. So I just think your, your qualifications have played their part in whatever it is that you're doing. And you couldn't be doing potentially the work you're doing without them, but there comes a point where they have no meaning anymore. And it's the experience you've got and the solutions that you can provide for your clients that actually get you the work. I hope that answers your question. Yeah, I think we have a comment from Jasvina, and that's pretty much, uh, you know, in this case, can we conclude that we need to attract clients who value what we do instead of Absolutely. being afraid of letting go clients who don't want to pay you what you've got Absolutely. to offer? Absolutely. So it starts with you. Everything starts with you, because if you don't value you, remember me saying clients will only really value you when you value yourself. And that story I told about a client who... Um, you know, her clients started really valuing her after she put her prices up, after she was starting to organize her business so she was in charge, not so they were in charge, after she got rid of a client that she did, you know, for a long time she hadn't wanted. You have to value yourself and then you start bringing in clients who also value you. If you don't value yourself, you'll just always be working with what I call piter clients, which are, it's a bit rude, pain in the and you'll have to work out the last word for yourself. Yeah. There's a question from Terry. Uh, what do you think about a free short consultation? A what? A free short consultation. What, what are you doing, Terry? What, do you, what does Terry do? Do we know? Um, by the way, it, 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 I guess it's Teresa Star. <laughs> Anyways, hi Terry. I'm not sure whether you can unmute yourself, but uh, I, I believe that uh, yeah, Terry's hey, a lawyer. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Hi, we can hey, hear you. Hey, Kriyasha, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. Nice. Uh, thank you for joining today's session. Yeah. No. Um. Well, actually, it's new. I mean, I'm I'm starting out on my own, so that's why I'm very interested in in, in this um, seminar. But also, I mean, I, I can sort of see it being a double-edged sword if you do offer a free consultation. But I just wonder what your thoughts were. So what? Sorry. What do you do, Terry? Did you say you're a lawyer? I'm, I'm well, I'm ex-barrister uh, lawyer. Okay, so I guess the answer is, <clears throat> it depends what you're trying to find out in that consultation. I mean, I do for my business mm. um, because it's important because I want to make sure, A, that I can solve the problem for the client 
and B, that there's a good fit between us, because obviously with coaching, it's a very personal thing. And uh, I don't, you know, I want to make sure that we like each other, we get on, the communication is really open, all those sorts of things. So it depends if you need to do that, if you think you need to do that. I mean, solicitors do it as well, don't they? Yeah, I mean, some do, definitely. Um, but I, I guess the danger is that you, you kind of answer, I mean, um, it's unlikely that you'll answer every question they have, but the danger is that you do give them the information straight away, especially yeah, yeah. if you're That's very what, experienced. Yeah. yeah, you have to be really, really aware of that. It's very, 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 very easy to give your value away. If they're just asking loads of questions. I think yeah. the thing is, um, you really want to have a 10 minute call or something on the phone to find out what their problem is. And then yeah. if you see that there's potential there, you just, are you, are you direct access, are you? Or you're not doing that, you're not being a barrister anymore, you're being unregulated barrister? Um, yeah, no, I, I, I love the bar some time ago, but um, so I've been in house counsel and now I'm going to sort of set up my own company. Right, right, right. Oh, really, yeah, it's I, very early days. Yeah, yeah, just two, two, 10 or 15 minutes on the phone to establish what they're looking for. Mm -hmm. um, and then I would get them into a paid meeting because otherwise you're just going to, um, you're just going to land up giving too many answers to them. Okay, thank you. Which is not what I do in the meetings I have. I find no, out what okay. their pain That's, is and how extreme yeah. their pain is and what it, what it's costing them to not be charging what they're worth, you know, what, what it's costing them financially, what it's costing them emotionally, how mm -hmm. long the problem's been going on. You know, and then I could, you know, the story I told earlier on about the architect who was losing about 20,000 a year. And I said, well, that means in 10 years time, you've lost 200,000 pounds. We're talking about now um, yeah. sterling. And, you know, it, it just there was just silence because he was so shocked. And so therefore, I know in that situation, there's something worth working on there, isn't there? Because I don't want this person to be losing that much money. Yeah. Um, so that's that's why it's slightly different for me. But for you, you could easily, I think, give away too much if you get on the phone with somebody and just talk endlessly or allow them to talk. Because I, I guess um, it, you could also um, do a little bit of, of um, you know, seeing personalities fit because, you know, again, they can see where they're yeah. your sort of lawyer that they want, want to work with. So, uh, yeah, there is that. There is yeah. that. Mm. Um, and you sound really nice anyway, so I'm sure they would. But you, it's just, as you said, being really careful because, you know, as human beings, if we can get something for free, and I don't care who we are and where we are in the world, we'll get it for free if we sure. can. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. just human nature, isn't it? If you can get something for nothing, oh, good oh, um, yeah. people will take advantage. So it's all about you being in control of, of the clients rather than the clients being in control of you. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Vanessa. Thank Terry, you. No problem. Thank you. Perfect. I think we've uh, we've covered all the questions. Um, great. Perfect. I think we've covered all the questions. Yeah. Thank you so much, uh, Vanessa, for for your time and for you know going through all the questions today. And thank you as well, everybody who joined. I think we've had a really insightful session. Uh, if you want to get in touch with Vanessa, we've uh, you know we've put her contact details on the chat. And feel free and please download her ebook as well, which is an Amazon bestseller. Um, perfect. So great. We had a really great insightful session today. Thank you all for joining. Thank you, everybody. And if you if a, if a question pops up in your mind afterwards, because I know that's what happens to my brain, because my brain's a bit slower, then, you know, feel free to drop me an email and I'll see if I can answer it for you. Great. Perfect. Great. So this concludes the webinar. Thank you all for attending. Thank you, Vanessa. Thank you. Thank you.